November 26, 2022, one of my childhood dreams finally got to come true. Even as a young child, after visiting Charleston, I knew that there is nothing I would rather do than give a tour of a historical home. Finally, as a member of the Daughters of the American Revolution, I get that chance. Come with me to an 1800s Christmas as I give a tour of the Stony Landing House, located at the old Santee Canal Park in Monk's Corner. The home sits on a property that was originally part of a 12 to 16 thousand acre land grant to Peter Colleton. This area was originally referred to as Stone Landing, but during the 1700s, the name changed to Stony Landing, and this name has stuck with the property till today. This area was very important to the early South Carolina colony. That is because the Cherokee Path, also known as the Congaree Road, ran through this property. This was a major trading route where goods like rice, indigo, and cotton would travel either to the upcountry or to the port of Charleston. Today, most of this Cherokee path is covered by interstate. However, in the town of 96, you can still walk on what was the original Cherokee path. The Stony Landing House was built in 1843 by John Dawson. John Dawson was a Charleston merchant, and this was his second home. In fact, it's not a coincidence that he chose this location, as the home was very close to this trading route. Today, you can visit this house, which still sits in its original location. When you visit, you'll notice that the house sits high on a limestone bluff. This was to keep the house safe from flooding. You may also notice the eight-foot brick pillars underneath the home. If you're curious to why the house was placed on top of these pillars, the answer is quite simple. The house was placed atop these pillars to help keep the home cool during the harsh South Carolina summers. This worked by creating a natural breeze space. Another interesting fact about these pillars is that the house is not affixed to the pillars in any way. However, the house has remained on these pillars throughout time and natural disasters. This is because of the weight of the home and the house's balanced architecture. When you're visiting the house, you will notice that the house does not face the river. If you're wondering why Mr. Dawson would have wanted to miss out on such a view, it's because the house originally didn't have this view. In fact, where the river is now looked mostly like swamp. The view did not become quite so lovely until the 1930s when Santee Cooper flooded the lakes. While visiting the house, there are a few interesting things that you'll want to make sure you take note of. First, besides the eight foot pillars, you'll want to notice how the windows are located within the house. The windows were strategically placed across from one another so that a cool breeze could go throughout the house to help keep it cool during those hot summers. The second thing you'll want to notice that while elaborate in today's standards, the molding is not near as impressive as some of the homes of the time. While lacking in some of the things you may notice in Charleston homes of the time, this house still has plenty of southern charm. You can see that as you walk on the elongated porch, which was common during the time. Look up and notice the haint blue ceilings. This haint blue continues to be very popular for southern porches. Not only does it keep evil spirits from entering the home, it also helps prevent nests of wasps and dirt daubers. 
The third thing that you'll want to notice when visiting the house is the original hand-hewed pine floors. This house has had many owners throughout the years. One of the home's notable owners was Dr. Julian Ravenel. Dr. Ravenel realized the true value in this property was actually the land itself. He realized that the mall within the soil could be used to produce agricultural limestone. Eventually, he and his partner Stevens founded the Colleton Lime Works, and eventually the company went on to make bricks. Dr. Ravenel lived in the house during the Civil War. And while it's not confirmed, it is highly speculated that Dr. Ravenel had the Little David commissioned and built on property. The Little David was the first semi-submersible boat to use torpedoes. During the Little David's first mission against the Yankee invaders, it successfully struck the Ironside. While the Ironside did not sink, the Confederacy deemed the Little David's mission so successful that it had other torpedo boats built. Today, you can see a replica of the Little David in front of the Parks Museum. In 1910, this house and 622 acres was owned by Senator Dennis. This house went on to be a private residence all the way up to the 1970s. At this time, the house had been modernized. After the park took ownership of the home, they remodeled the home and brought it back to its former glory. By 1989, when the park opened, the Stony Landing House had been furnished in period reproduction furniture. Today, only a few things in the house remain modern, and that is because the house is sometimes used for weddings. As mentioned previously, while the furniture is not original to the home, it is decorated so that you can see how it may have looked. Also, this house is very balanced, and you will notice that it has four rooms on the first floor and four rooms on the top floor. On the first floor, you will notice that the house has a finishing kitchen and a dining room. Today, this kitchen has a hidden stove top and a refrigerator. However, in the 1800s, this room would have been used to get the food ready to serve. Due to the risk of fire, at the time the food was actually cooked in an outside kitchen area. Also in the first floor, you'll notice two sitting areas. That would have been because the guest would have been separated by gender. The parlor would have been where the women would conversate and take tea. The other room would have been for the gentlemen, where they could enjoy conversation, smoke cigars, and enjoy whiskey. Something interesting that I learned from another DAR member while giving a tour is that it wasn't uncommon for the gentlemen's room to actually have a smaller doorway. This was to discourage women in their full dresses from coming into a room which was designed for men only. While touring this house, you may notice a small door under the stairwell. That is a secret bathroom that the park kept in the home. Of course, during the time that the house was constructed, there was no indoor bathroom and you would have to use an outhouse. On the second floor, there is also four rooms. 
During the tour, I learned that these rooms had never been allowed to the public other than if you were having a wedding. These rooms were decorated as bedrooms. In these bedrooms, because the home originally did not have a bathroom, you could notice chamber pots. The museum also furnished the bedrooms with rope beds. These rope beds were very common during the time and is how the term sleep tight, don't let the bed bugs bite became known. While giving a tour, I made sure to point out to everyone, while this house didn't have restrooms, it also didn't have closets. In fact, when this house was constructed, people used armoires and trunks for their clothing. The fourth room was closed off as it's very modern and it is used for bridal parties to change in. Notice while giving the tour that most people were very apprehensive about the upstairs. That was because of the narrow stairway and because of the rumor that the house is haunted. I assured these people that the scariest thing about this house was the fact that it didn't have air conditioning, bathrooms, or a closet. Another question that I got was in regards to slavery. I did try to do some research about this prior to the tour. The only thing I could find online is that it was not documented. There is no proof that slaves ever lived on property, but because so many wealthy people lived there, it is very probable. For this occasion, the house had been decorated for Christmas. The decorations had been provided by the local Collector's Corner Antique Shop. During the tour, I tried my best to make sure everyone knew that these decorations can be purchased at this local store. If you enjoyed this tour of the Stony Landing House, please remember to like this video and as always, thanks for watching.